Have you served one? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth to die for our sins, who made it possible for us to be here today. And Lord, as we about to enter yes, your will, Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to enlighten our minds, to be our teacher and to, and to be our guide. Just receptive hearts, in just name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, brethren, I'd like to thank um, the Lord for allowing me to be here again. Yeah. It's always a privilege for me to be a voice of your will of encouragement to, to, to his people. I really, I'm very grateful for I'm very grateful to to be at the Midnight Cry ministry yeah. today. Yeah. I thank God for the shield for the invitation. I just want to listen. I'm warming up. Just give me a second. Okay? <laughs> I've known Elisha for a long, long, long time. And I'm very grateful that our friendship has been consistent. Amen. You know, we might have a little there and there and there every now and then, but it's consistent and it's, it's productive. And I'm happy for that. Amen. Uh, I know his wife. You know, happy to see her also. Um, his brother, the, the musician. Um, it's always nice to see you, Sister Claudette. Yonet, right? Yonet. And Sister Behind. And I'll come to this friend in a few minutes and um, I just want to acknowledge um, Pastor Calendo. I've been for a long time, so from New Heaven, Seven Adventist Church. It's always nice to see you. I'm Pastor. And Brother B, it's nice to see you. Thanks for. Um, Gracious, gracious for your presence. And the others, I don't really know you, but um, I guess um, I don't know. Robert. Oh, Robert. Yeah. Okay, it's nice to see you. And those are like me, I already know your sister. What's your name? Robert. And the Robert only, only reason I'm doing that is because there are a few of us here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just trying to become acquainted with who you are. Okay, so okay, we, we didn't know, know each other. Yeah. And your sister, I didn't get your name. Berlin. It's so a Berlin. Remember the Berlin Wall. Berlin Wall. <laughs> but it spells okay. different. That's the easiest way to remember it. Okay, all right. right. It's nice to see you, okay? And there's a young sister. It's nice to see her. And, um, Reverend, it's always a, a joy and a privilege to be in the, in the house of God on a Sabbath morning yes. to, for worship. I'm very, very, very grateful that we can um, assemble to give God thanks and praise. Um, the brother that spoke this morning, I keep forgetting your name, Carlos. Brother Carlos. Carlos. I've known him for some time now. I met him at Mount Pisgah St. Avenue Church many years ago. That's where I first met him. And um, I've seen him every now and then at different places, but it's always good to see him too. Um, uh, to uplift God's name in, in worship and in studies. Now, he was here this morning, I gave you the word straight. You know, he gave it to you straight. But, but Reverend, um, but with me, um, the message I come with is a message of encouragement. Uh, the message I come with is a message of, of appeal to God's people. Because the person says that um, Christ is acquainted, acquainted, acquainted with our sorrows, our difficulties, our trials. Okay? So the message I come with is for those who are crying out to God for help, for deliverance. The slides are to uplift somebody. And brethren, that's the ministry that God has placed in my heart. And um, there's something else I would like to say to us, but um, I will um, wait for a few minutes to really share it with you um, as we go along in terms of the presentation. So allow me to get into the word with you. Uh, the topic today is the trial of our feet. The trial of our feet. The trial of your feet. But um, I'll come to that in a few minutes. But before we begin, I'd like to present something very important here to us. It's a, a very, it's a quote that I really use on a regular basis so we could really understand where we are today and what God is really doing from His people today. His person says to us, says to us that. There are many precious truths contained in the Word of God, but it's present truth that the flock needs now. 
present truth is what the flocking is now. Present truth it will, it will, will prepare us for translation. It's present truth that would prepare us to go for a time of trouble. So present truth is very important for us to get into right now. Another statement that I really emphasize on before I get to the word is just to make it very clear, Reverend, um, Christ said something very important to, to his people, to the early Christian church, to the, the disciples, and it, it transcends to us today. He said, the Bible says, And Christ came to, and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy, Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So, brethren, Christ is saying, listen, I'm hiring you, but go and give what I have given you. That's the common gift of the early Christian church. So whenever we go to do ministry, we have to uplift Christ, and we have to give the word of God as he gave it to us. So he said to teach him to do all things, whatever that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, and even unto the end of the world, okay? So that's very important for us to understand. And we as the church, we believe in what? Isaiah 18 verse, 8 verse 20. To the law and to the testimony. That's what God gives to the church, brethren. To the law and to the testimony. It is speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That's what God, that's what God gives to the Adventist church today. And Revelation 18 10, um, 8 what, um, sorry. Revelation, I have it right here. Revelation 9, 9 10, worship God, the testimony is what? The spirit of purpose. That's what was given to the church. Brethren, we cannot go around it. God gave us the Bible and spirit of prophecy as a guide. First Peter 1 7. Now the trial of your faith being much more than <coughs> precious, much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the parent of our, our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Reverend, I want to emphasize on the word here. The trial of your faith being much precious, much more precious than gold. What is that gold that perisheth? Though it is being it is be though it be tried with fire. What is the fire? What does it represent? And what does that gold symbolize? So we need that gold so we could be a praise and honor to God at his appearing. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible is saying here. Yeah. So what does that really mean? Now, if we move to if we move to um, Revelation chapter three seventeen, the Bible says, "Because thou said, I am rich and increase of goods and have need of nothing, I know if that I know it not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked." So this is our condition as a church. Yes. Because you know that we are here this year, right? We know that we are here this year, right, yes. Reverend? So this is our condition. Let us not be afraid to say, it, Reverend, we are. <laughs> Part of me this year, we simply we are this year condition. Every one of us, oh, yeah. we are defective in some way or the other. Mm -hmm. Trust me, God has described the church to us. And God knows everything, brethren. God knows everything. So, mm -hmm. so this is our condition right here. But He gave us a remedy. And this is the remedy. I constitute to what? Buy of me what? Go oh, oh, try in the fire. It's the same as First Peter 1 7. It's the same thing here. Gold that perisheth. So here he's, he's counseling us to, I call it by me, gold tried in the fire, that thou may be rich. So the emphasis here will be on the gold. And the Bible goes on to say, white bread man, that thou may be clothed, and, and, and the shape of that nakedness be not appear, and anon as if I starve, that thou may see. Now all these are good things to cultivate, okay, brethren? So here, the, the remedy is in the whole tax, but we will, it will emphasize on the gold part. The gold being trying to fire. Okay? Now, if you look at gold, gold is a strong metal. It's very valuable. Gold is something that's, that's something that people cherish. So, 
That goal that the Lord is saying that we should have, we should cultivate, is something that's rich. So what is that goal? What is that goal that the Lord is saying we should have? We take your time. Growing, growing is a slow pro process. Slow process. Let me say it again. Growing is a slow process. All right, okay. But what is happening is making a change. Mm -hmm. So when the day, right. D-A-Y, right. when the day comes to an end, right. God shows up. Yes. This is where you are now. Okay. But he wants a different movement for the near for the next day. That's true. And so we have to become accustomed with moving. That's true. And while we are moving, you know, making an effort, he meets us where we are. Yes. That's the beauty about God. You see, God is not like man. Man sees your condition outwardly, but God knows the heart. You see. Amen. And today we're going to go very deep, Reverend, very deep. We are getting at something right now because uh, for some reason um, there's something that we need to understand as a people. I'm going to read a statement from, so what is that gold that we were talking about? That gold, that gold that is so precious. In volume, in volume, volume 5, page 243, that gold. It when says to us, again and again has the voice from heaven addressed you. Will you obey his voice? Would you hear the concept of the true witness to speak the gold trying to fire? Who does, who's the true witness, brethren? Christ himself. That's right. Do we have proof of that? Revelation 1 verse 5 says, after Jesus Christ, who is what? The faithful witness. Okay, so Christ is the faithful. So he's speaking there. Okay, so it says, so the word of God goes up, it says, it says to us, will you hear the concept of the true witness to speak gold trying to fire? White raiment and I stand? The goal is what? Faith and love. Faith and love. We're getting to that right now. We're about to get into something right now. Because Reverend, every time the, the disciples came out of the field of Jesus, they learned something new. Those mothers followed Christ for a reason. And I just want us to understand, Reverend, there's something that's... There is something that we are missing as a people. Reverend, we don't know everything. We have everything, but we don't know everything. At the church, we were gifted with knowledge. We have a we have a resource at the church. We have the whole, um, we have the whole. How should I put it? Um, the whole plan of this was given to the church. We have everything, but we don't know everything, <clears throat> and that's the reason why we have to remain at the feet of Jesus to learn Amen. consistently. And we can learn from each other. We don't know everything. That's something I keep telling the brethren. Let's learn from each other. We have to learn humility. We have to learn humility. And I want to get into that. That we, we spoke about love, but we spoke, I want to get into that love part in a few minutes. The goal that, we, that, 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 that God is looking for in for us, looking for um, for in us right now, is, is the faith and love. Now, I would like to encourage us to just transition to, to um, a statement um, a statement that's given to us. In the richest life of every soul who is faithfully, um, finally. Vi finally. finally victorious, there will be scenes of terrible perplexity and trial. But his, but his knowledge of the scriptures will enable him to what? Bring, Bring to, his, to the mind the encouraging promises of God. Which will comfort his heart and strengthen his his faith in the power of the mighty one. So, so this is the source, brethren. The source is the not of the word of God. The power is in the word of God, brethren. I want to encourage us, brethren. You have to read for yourself. I want to encourage everybody to read for themselves. We have to make time to read. That's a that's the luxury or the privilege, privilege that God has given us right now in terms of missionary time. For us to make time to, just to make time to spend in His Word, to study, to study, brethren, to study, to read. Okay, I want to make it very simple. Okay, because I think um, some of us we, we we have issues studying, but if if you just read something simple every day, then you will get to where you want to eventually. Okay, brethren. That's what the Bible says was um, in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 9. An Hebrew with his mouth destroys his neighbor. But what? 
through knowledge, knowledge shall it just be delivered. Reverend, we need knowledge to so look and take it from point A to point B. We live in a time when the world has changed and the process have been are fulfilled before us. There are sins to come and we're getting to it right now as we go along with our presentation. We need another knowledge of the word of God. There's no two way about it, brethren. We need that guide. We need the guide. We need the guide, okay? Gold is tried in the fire that it may be purified from dross, but faith that is purified by trial is more precious than refined gold. Then let us look upon trials as what? Yeah. Reasonable, a reasonable way. Let us not come through them what? With murmuring and discontent. Now, that's a problem we have as a people. Many times we complain too much. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with the children of Israel, Mr. Numbers chapter 14, verse 2. And all the children of Israel murmured and against Moses and against Aaron. We murmur and we complain too much. And guess what? Most of them, when the brethren complain, they complain at the leadership. Mm -hmm. If you really look at it, mm -hmm. majority of the times, and that's what they did in, in Bible time because Moses was a leader. And most of them in the church, the members, they complain about the leaders, the pastors, the elders. Oh, Brother Shady, um, he's not doing this. He, why he always come to church for a blue suit or a black suit? Why he always doing this? Why he always supposed to always complain about the leaders? Complain, complain, murmuring, and murmuring. murmuring yeah, murmuring. murmuring all the time. I've got time for it. You know, and that's a bad thing. That's a bad spirit to cultivate. Let us not come through them with murmuring and discontent. Let us not make mistakes in getting out of them in, in times of trial. We must cling to God with his promises. So, brethren, even when we go through difficulties and trials, we should, never compl we should never complain also. We should never, like, always wow. feel like, why that is happening to me? You know, it's like you're questioning God. And God is always there with you. But he's allowing us to go for trials for a reason. And let's find out what's going on. But I'm getting at something very important right now. Now, I want to bring, I, want to, I, I put a picture of something in there because we're talking about the gold trying to fire. Okay? We were talking about there was a lady with an issue of blood for 12 years. And she had heard of Jesus, right? Because you know, Jesus was very popular. He performed many miracles, you know, he, he prayed to so many people and um, he comforted so many people. And this lady had heard of Jesus Christ. And in Mark chapter 25, verse 42, the Bible says to us, and look round about to see her that that had done this thing. Because she said, listen, if I could just teach, touch him, she would be healed. And her faith, she had to exercise her faith. And the Bible goes on to say, but the woman fearing and trembling, knowing, that, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said to her, daughter, thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. So, brethren, I'm saying that because of a feat, it's something that we already familiar with in terms of the lesson, but um, I put that in there first to understand. We're talking about that gold trial in the fire. We, we need that gold. And here we see that that lady has demonstrated that faith in God. Mm -hmm. And she actually was victorious. And Christ did bless her or reward her for her faith. Okay? So, but what I want to emphasize on here is the word whole. Christ said, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Now, when something is whole, it means that something that's unbroken, right? Mm -hmm. Something that's, that's, that's undamaged. And many of us, brethren, we are, we are damaged. Mm -hmm. And we need to be made whole. Mm -hmm. And the only one that can, can really restore you is Christ. Mm -hmm. Whenever I present a message, I want to present Christ. Because mm -hmm. I want to look to Jesus, my friend, as the one who can really, you know, remedy our situations, our difficulties, you know, our problems. Because our personal issues 
Only Christ knows your problems. We don't really know what's happening with people. Your internal problems, we don't know. We don't know what's happening in your house, in your home. We don't know. You know what's happening in your heart. Yes. It might appear that we might know, but Pastor Lord knows your business. So it means that only you can go to Him for restoration. Yes. <clears throat> There's too many things happening around us, brethren. It's like, and I don't want to say too much, but um, I just want to go ahead with this message so we can understand what's really happening. Because we're talking about that gold. We're trying to attain that gold. And how is that done? That's, that's, that's the key. The gold. Prayer, prayer and faith. I'm reading from early writings, page 72. I have frequently seen that the children of, of the Lord neglect what prayer, hmm. especially sacred prayer, altogether too much that many, many do not exercise what? Their faith, which is their privilege and duty to exercise. Often waiting for the feeling which, which faith alone can bring. Feeling is not faith. Mm. Mm. Many times we say we feel this. Not I mean anything. Feeling is not faith. The two are distinct. Faith is ours to what? Exercise. Exercise. But joyful feeling and the blessing are God's to give. The grace of God comes to the soul through the channel of the living faith. And that faith is... It is, uh, it is in our power to exercise. So remember, we need to exercise the faith. Faith is something like, you know, if you want to go to the gym, you know, you start out you know, lifting up some weights there and there. And gradually, like a brother said, you know, we do a little more. We exercise the faith. We have to exercise the faith. Okay, brethren, we have to exercise our faith. Our faith becomes stronger. And as we overcome one thing, I think a brother said this morning, as you overcome one, then the other one comes along, you overcome one, and the other will overcome the other. And have a, have a slide on that, and on, on there also, so we can, so we can have an idea of what, you know, we have to go through in terms of ready to get that, that faith of gold. I asked the angel why there was no f more faith in, and power in Israel. He's in the church. He said he let go of the arm of God too soon. Hmm. Press your petitions to the throne and hold on by strong faith. The promises are sure. Believe he received the things he asked and he shall have them. We have to believe, Reverend. Yes. Okay, we have to believe when we go to God. Okay? Now, so we just touched on the faith part. Okay? We're not done as yet, but we touched on, on the faith part. So the question I have for us is, what is the mission of the church? Now we have some Bible scholars in here and everybody here study and read. I have a single question for us right now. What is the mission for the church? Take your time. Because don't just give me any answer. I didn't ask what is the message. I asked what is the mission of the church. I need about two or three answers. Quickly, just one sentence. What is the mission for? And uh, you know, we had an entire quarter, right? The Tabo School quarter that we studied before had an entire quarter on the mission, right, of the church. We don't study that. But, uh, oh, you guys don't study that? Okay, that's okay. That's okay. So, but if, even if, what is the mission of the church? Yeah. Pardon? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Why don't we just go? We for God. Father, the people for God. The people for God. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Very good. In what way? What was Christ's Preach, mission? Teach, baptize, no. make disciples. Make disciples. Okay. Kind of the story what they said. Kind of reclaiming the world for God. Okay. What is message. No, but that's a message. That's the next question. We all know the message. Oh, proclaim it. I, I, I personally, my, I have a different mindset to this because I don't believe the church. I don't believe the church has a mission. I believe the church is mission. But that too. Mm -hmm. We are being practical. Yes. We are being practical. That's, that's, either way, it's the same. It's, it, you're right. So, to preserve time, brethren, we are the church. We are the people. We are, we are the church. And to show you, brethren, I'm, I'll tell you what the mission is. 
that our mission is the same as the mission of Christ. Let's see what our mission is. Because the message, we do the message, right, to pray from the previous messages and so forth, and then we have the pillars and so forth, and we'll come to that in a few minutes. But the message of the church, this is the message of the church. This is, let's do the message of the church. I'm reading from Medical Ministry, page 25. It basically says to us, the object of our mission is the same as the object of Christ's mission. Why did God send his son to, a, to the fallen world? Let's read together. To make known unto mankind the love, his love for them. His love for them. Hmm. Brethren, to make known and to demonstrate to mankind his love for them. You remember when I read about the goal represents faith and what? And love. Without those two things, we will not be successful. So, so uh, let me ask a question before you go. Christ, what is Christ in the church? Christ is the founder of the church. He is the head of the church. Yeah, I mean, Christ is the head of the church. Yeah, what, 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 what is that? What is that? What do you mean? I must know. He's the leader. Oh, oh, yeah, of course, yes. He's the head of the church, yes. Do we see him as the one responsible for the, for the, let me say, I don't want to say jumping because they're not games. Right. But the moving forward. And what? Moving is not this, and moving is this. Not this. Right. Right. So what part does the church play in this? Yes, very, very, good, very good question. I'll come to that right now. This is right there. Very good question. All right. Very good question. But allow me to get there, okay, Reverend, because I'm trying to get to something. The theme of, of this presentation is the trial of our faith. Mm. And that's coming. But I'm trying to set the foundation first. Because we need to know who we are. And I like what the brother said this morning. We have to know who we are, our identity and what we believe and so on. All that is good. But again, pillars must have a foundation. Yeah. And the foundation must be strong. Christ. Christ. Very good. We can't leave that out, brethren. You can't leave, you can't leave quite out, out of the equation. That's why you need to it. Okay? This is very, yeah, I know. This is very important. It must be emphasized that Christ is the source. He's the foundation. And here he's saying, the true witness speaks, we must have strong faith and love. That gold. How do we attain that gold? That's a question. Let's find out. So John 3, 16, as we know, is a very famous text, right? For God so loved the world. See, because of love, he sent his son, his son to die, right? To rescue us from sin or eternal death. That we know for a fact, okay? Um, and this, I, I like this one. Uh, 1 John 5, 2 verse 5 says to us, And whoso keep, keepeth his word in him verily is the love of what? God what? Perfected. Perfected. I like that text. I love this. This is good, okay? Reverend, if you, if you don't really know what love, you have to ask God to teach you how to love because that's, mm. that's part of the growing process. And if you're going to be translated, you have to have love that loving man type in your heart. And you have to show it, especially for the brethren. It's very important. Okay? So, John 14 verse 16 says, says to us, this is very important. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another what? Comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Hebrews 10 verse 12, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. First Peter 2 verse 5, for there is one God, and what? One meter between God and man, and he's what? The man Christ. That is Jesus. That's right. Hebrews 9, 11. But Christ being one and a high priest of, of good things to come. Okay, so here's our high priest. Let me, let me jump to, and let me finish reading the whole thing. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to, to, to stay, to say I'm not of his, of his building. So here we see Christ is what? Christ is our comforter, but, but, but actually the Holy Spirit is our comforter because he said, I must go and see the comforter. He's, he sits on the right hand of God. 
He's our mediator. He's our high priest. Okay? And here Inspiration says to us here that in my scripture it says, He is our mediator, the completeness of his humanity and perfection of, of his humanity from form, form for us a strong ground upon which we may be brought into reconciliation with God. It was when we were yet sinners that Christ died for us. We have we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. His nail pierced hands are are at risk toward heaven and earth. With one hand he lays hold of sinners upon earth and with the other he did what? Cross the throne of the infinite. I love this. This is good stuff. But and thus he makes reconciliation for us. Christ is today standing as our advocate before the Father. He is the one mediator between God and man, bearing the marks of his crucifixion. He pleads the causes of our souls. So here we see, you see Christ is everything. And I'd like to talk about the foundation. I'd like to, because we're going to be the foundation, we're going to stand. And many of us, the reason why people are not being converted, people are not doing missionary work, the reason why people are being crazy in the church, is because they were never grounded. You were never grounded, brethren. And no matter what you try to do to them, don't you see? And it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Every white boy is the same thing. I mean, the same thing. Everybody's frustrated. The church is feeble. Everybody's complaining. Why is not? Jesus is the answer to building whatever you're doing in terms of, in terms of the spiritual, in terms of spiritual, um, um, in terms of spiritual um, ministry. We need Christ to help us help those who are struggling and help those who are trying to get on the feet. With that foundation, brethren, we also we get frustrated with people. And we don't want that. Now here we see that Christ is our mediator and is our high priest. But we are talking about the trial of our faith today. So what happens after? As I said, we have a problem. We have a problem here. When he leaves the sanctuary, darkness covers the inhabitants of the earth. And the fearful time, the righteous must live in the sight of the Holy God without an intercessor. That's what we have a problem. That's what we're going to have a problem. Right now, Christ is interceding for us, right? But at some point, we do, we're, going to, we're going to have to stand without what? An intercessor. Without the intercessor, brethren, at some point, every church member will have to stand on his or her own without an intercessor. Mm -hmm. What will happen then? And as you know, brethren, you can see what the words are already changing. Hmm. So I'm saying, we're taking the times lightly. Let's find out what, what, what is about to happen. The restraint which has been upon the wicked is removed. And Satan has the he, he has entire control of the of the finally impenitent. God's God's long suffering has ended. The world has rejected his mercy despised his love and trampled upon his law. The wicked have passed the boundary of deprivation. The Spirit of God, persistently resisted, has been at last withdrawn, unsheltered by divine grace. They have no protection from the wicked one. That's what we have a problem. That's what we have a problem. And guess what? Every Adventist person would have to go for the same thing. Tell themselves, thank you, very good. Now let's find out what's going on. It gets worse. Let's find out what's going on. It's, it's happening right here. Satan will then plunge the inhabitants of the earth into one great final trouble. Huh. As the angel of God ceases to hold in check the fierce yes, winds of the human passion, all the elements of, str of strife will be let loose. How much? How much? Could you go back? All. Go back from, go back from Satan will. Satan will then plunge the inhabitants of the earth into one great final trouble. One 
great. What, what, what is that? Ah, the good mm. question. Good question. Don't tell anybody right now. Mm. Let the word speak for itself. See? Because I don't like to just say things, brethren. I just turn on truth. The word of God. Okay? Let's find out. That's a good question. And you ask two questions. Very good. Those who want, listen now, listen to this. These things will happen, right? The trials will happen. And calamities will take place on this earth. And disaster will take place. Things will happen in this world. But guess what happened? Guess what, that's what will happen. Those who own the law of God have been accused. Those who own the law of God have been accused of bringing judgments upon the world. You see, so you see all the things that happen in this. We, we had, um, we had um, the COVID. We had, we had so many things happen. Soon they'll start blaming Sabbath keepers. Mark my words, brethren. It's, it's there. They will start blaming Sabbath keepers for these things. That's come upon the world. It's right there. God is telling us things in advance to prepare. You see, brethren, you remember the time of Noah? There was a soul in days of Noah, so shall so, so, so it be now, right? Yeah. What happened in the time of Noah? God told Noah, listen, go and preach the word because I'll destroy that generation, wicked generation. He told Noah to go and give the message. He, Noah, had, Noah had to go and give a message of warning. It's the same thing today. The Lord gives us a message of warning. Warning about to come upon the land today. And it's going to happen. So here we see that the Lord is preparing us as a people. And here we see that those who honor God, those who honor the love of God, have been accused of bringing judgment upon the world. And they will be regarded as what? As the cause of the fearful convulsions of nature and the strife and the bloodshed among men that are filling the earth with war, with troubles and all those things. We'll be blamed for what's happening. Mark my word, brethren, it's going to happen. So, and that's taken from Great Controversy, page 88. So, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like a small boy. Right. When, when children okay hear this right. from mommy or daddy. Okay. They start to hide from there. They start running and hiding in the house for themselves, by themselves. Mm. I'm thinking because I'm looking at the children in my mind. Okay. I have a lot of these children in, 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 in grand, grandparents. Right. If we don't live, right. if we don't live the right. life expected upstairs, right. we can't know the home downstairs. I agree. Mm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But you know what happened? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that in a few minutes because, Reverend, I always, you know, um, the message we have right now is, is a message of of hope. Yes. And, um, Reverend, I'm telling you right now, it's like God is uh, it's not, it's to see any, it's not to see anyone get lost, you know. Um, and we have to have the same mentality. We have to see all the brethren making the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter who they are. Amen. You know, so I'm saying we have to have that love. that love. Take very good. That love. You see? That love. In spite of the way they, they treat us, even in our heart, man, let us we say with a prayer. So the Holy Spirit can, you know, impact on their life and help them whatever they're dealing with. Because people, people are going for a lot of issues, brethren. I'm telling you right now. Oh yeah. People are going for a lot of issues in this world. A lot of things, mm -hmm. and we don't know what they are, mm -hmm. but there's something called intercessory prayer. We can intercede on people's behalf, mm -hmm. or brothers we have, or sisters we have. We can pray, and I'm always free to help them. So, so let's let's move forward because of time. When God's presence was finally withdrawn from the Jewish nation, <coughs> priests and people knew it not. Mm -hmm. So when it when the person had closed the Jewish economy, they didn't even realize it. They went around doing their normal thing. When person closes for the Adventist church, we don't really know it <coughs> either. Okay? So, as the Sabbath has become the final the special point of controversy through Christendom and religious and secular authorities have, have combined to enforce the of the, of, of the Sunday uh, pre persistent refusal of the small memorial to minority. yield sorry, minority to yield to the people to the popular demand 
will make them objects of universal execration. Ex 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 Meaning that it's going to be an, a universal movement. Mm. That cellular movement will be universal, worldwide. Okay? And it's coming. The city laws will be universal. So that we already know. Can I think we can't hide nowhere. Thank you. But how are we to prepare for it? That's a question. We know it, but how are we to prepare for it? You remember Peter? Peter was with Jesus and said, Lord, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'll stay with you no matter what. I'll huh. stand with you. Mm. You see, and what happened to him when, when the you know, when face the situation? Reverend, my appeal to us today is we have to daily depend on God. Mm -hmm. Daily at this point in this course history, this hour that we're living in right now, this time, we have to seek God for, for strength. Because and we have to seek for that gold tried in the fire. Well, we need that gold. We are going to have to support each other. That too. Okay. This is not money now. Right. This is straight right. spiritual energy coming from each on the individual based on what you know. Right. If you don't know, forget about the other people. That's okay. <laughs> good point. Good point. Good point. The people of God will then be plunged into a, the, those scenes of affliction and distress. Described by, by what? By the prophet as what? The time of the Jacob's time trouble. Of Jacob's time of trouble. We don't talk much about that. But let me tell you what's about to happen. See, and it's come upon, come upon us unexpectedly. See, the time of Jacob's time of trouble. Thus saith the Lord, we have heard what? A voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. That's what God will, have, will go through at some point. And it's coming. But guess what? Listen to this. And she, 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 she made a statement based on Jeremiah. Prophetic um, statement from uh, um, Jeremiah. For thus said the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling of, uh, a trembling of fear, not of peace. And I, verse, verse 6. As ye know and see whether a man doth travail with child, therefore do I see every man with his hands on his, on his lines, as a woman travail all faces are turned into yes. paleness. So brethren, anyway, let me read verse 7. Alas, for the day is, is great, so that none is like it. It is, as, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be, be saved out of it. That's a good news. That God will deliver us out of that trouble. But we have to go through that time of trembling and of fear. God must go through that time. It will be a time of trembling. It, it will happen, brethren. There are things that we're about to go through that we're not really talking about. And it's going to hit us so. It's going to hit us. When we hit us, you know, we'll, it, will, it will really have an effect on us. And, and we, we don't want that to happen. So how will that happen? How will that happen? Let, let's find out. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 32. The experience of Jacob. Let's see what Jacob went through. And I'm happy that um, Elder Peter mentioned this morning. I'm happy he, he brought up this morning. I'm happy he did. I didn't say anything, but I said, okay, let's see. I'm happy he did. So let's see what's, what's happening here. Jacob's night of anguish when he wrestled with in prayer for deliverance from his the hand of Esau. Who was Esau? Brother. Yeah, Esau was his brother. Very good. Kill him. Now let's see. Thank you. Very good. Something really happened there. And let's see what's happening. Right, right, right. Let's see what's happening here, Reverend. It represents the experience of what God's people in what is a time of trouble. Ah. We have to go through that same experience. Now let's see how jo Jacob, um, um, Jacob overcame, so we can overcome also. Let's see. Because of the deception practice to secure his father's blessing intended for Esau, Jacob fled for his life, alarmed by his brother's deadly threats. Let me start. We all know a story, right? And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and we know a story, and, and we know that it was really his mother that really caused the whole thing to happen. But he took part of it. Right. But he took part of it, right? So he was responsible also. Okay? 
so should the followers of Christ as they approach the time of travel make every exertion to place themselves in a proper light before the people to disarm prejudice and to avert the danger which threatens liberty of conscience and the message is written to Jacob saying we have we came, we, we, we came to came. thy brother we came to thy brother and also he came to meet thee what and 400 men with him so Esau came to his brother with 400 men can you imagine that? What is that before? So, I not to love him. Thank you very much. <laughs> Reverend, there'll be a time when we, our own people, no will talking. turn against each other at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. The authority will get involved. Are you, who do you, who do you think will, how do you think the authority will know who we are? Hmm. Well, let me just say this. The same, <laughs> we keep saying, the laws are going to be passed. Right. And when it's passed, we have to be ex we have to, to, to observe it. Right, right. Let me tell you something. It's gonna pass anytime soon. Right, that's true. Anytime soon. That is true. And we have to know that yes. it's gonna be coming at us. Yes, 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 yes. But we can't sit and bother. We have to move. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but and I, I like that. I like that statement. But you know what I really want to say to us here right now, Brevin, is before we move, we have to move with wisdom. And we have to move with Christ leading us. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. That's the key. And that's what I'm trying to bring across to us here today. Remember, there's certain things that we have to know for people because the person's ignorance is no excuse for error or for sin. Mm -hmm. And I like the part that he mentioned this morning. That's good. But ignorance is not a good thing. Now, listen to this, Reverend. Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided his people that was with him, and the flocks and herds and the camels onto two bands. So now I'm getting to something very important right now. Having sent his family away that they might not witness his distress, Jacob remains alone to intercede with God. So he confesses his sin. Now, this is what Jacob did. Listen, 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 look at, because he was afraid and distressed, right? Because his brother came at him and 400 men. So this is what he did that night. He confesses his sin and greatly acknowledges the mercy of God toward him. With while with deep um, humiliation he pleads the covenant made with his fathers and the promises to himself in the night vision at Bethel and in the land of, of his exile. He, the crisis in his life has come. Hmm. Everything is at stake. Hmm. In the darkness and solitude, he, continued, he continues praying and humbling himself to God. You see what he started doing? First he confesses. And he started humbling himself before yeah. God. Yes. Okay? Um, where am I? Certainly a hand. Listen to this. After he did that, suddenly a hand is laid upon his shoulder as the day begins to break. The stranger puts forth his superhuman power at his touch. Oh, such a strong man, strong strong man seems, seems paralyzed. And falls and he falls helpless. and helpless, weeping, suppliant. Uh, the angel urges, Let me go, for the day breaketh. But the patriarch exclaimed, I will not let thee go except okay. thou bless. bless me. What confidence, what firmness, what perseverance, perseverance. Sorry, perseverance are here displayed. So, brethren, so here we see an example. So we have type. See what happened? See how Jacob was delivered? Remember, we had to follow the same example. Why do you think we are given this 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 this, this, this uh, um, um, information for? There it is. He gained a victory. Jacob, Jacob was victorious. And listen to this, brethren. After he went through that night of struggling, listen to this. He had power over the angel and prevailed. Through humiliation, repentance, and self-surrender. Stop, 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 stop. Mm -hmm. Who had the power? Huh? Who is he? Jacob. Jacob. He had the power to overcome the angel and prevail. Through humiliation, repentance, and self-surrender, this sinful, erring mortal prevailed with the majesty of heaven 
as the evidence of his triumph and an encouragement to others to Im to Im imitate his example. His name was, listen to this, after, because he was victorious, his name was changed from one which was a reminder of his sin to one that commemorated his victory. And the fact that Jacob had prevailed with God was an assurance that he would prevail with men. He, he no longer feared to encounter. to encounter his brother's anger for the Lord was his defense. Amen. You see? Amen. That's what we have to go through. Jacob prayed for deliverance. And when deliverance comes, he himself he accepted him there, he fighting with the deliverance. Well, Fight that's, whole that's night sure. Together, you know? Yes, he did. But the angel come to deliver you. That's right. And you fighting with him? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He's taking it? <laughs> he had agonized. You see, brethren, that's what and that's something we have to go through. Many times, you know, we want to go ahead, but the Lord is saying to us, just 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 wait on me. Wait on me. You know, we just wait on me. And that's what the Lord is trying to be, the Lord is trying to get our attention right now. I, I know it's preacher preaching, but um, I'm gonna bring it down. We we just raising it, man. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. When we asking God for something. Mm -hmm. And God is sending it to us. Right. And we are still fighting <laughs> with what God is sending to us. Right. It mm -hmm. means that we don't understand what God is saying to us. Right? Could be that. Uh, uh, yeah. Jacob, Jacob, even though he asked for the deliverance. Right. When the deliverance came, he was fighting with the deliverance. Mm. Because he did not know the deliverance. Mm. Until... Sometimes, 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 right. God have to put us in very awkward position mm. in order for us to recognize who He is. Interesting mm. point. It was only when He was mm. paralyzed. Yes, yes. Then He understood. Mm. Interesting. He delivered. I like that. God point. sometimes, sometimes we just fight with God, <laughs> but sometimes God yeah. does have to. Paralyze us. That's true. That's true. Make you sit true. down. Yes, put yes. you on, on, on something that you have no yes. control over. <laughs> then you will be right. 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 That's true. Easy word of God. That very good. Very good point. Yeah, go ahead. Listen, you kind of remember before the sad situation. <laughs> right. And Jacob got a dream. Right. About the ladder. Okay. And that ladder and, and that dream should have even prepared. Ah, that is true too. Very good, very good. Very good point, very good point. You should, should have. I just show you, as human nature, brethren, we, we, we tend to, you know, we tend to be careless sometimes and we tend to, you know, just, you know, um, allow the human nature to kick in. But we have to learn to trust God at all times and to know what He's doing, you know, with us and through us. Jacob was driven almost to despair, but he knew that without help from heaven he must perish he had sincerely repented of his great sin and he appealed to the mercy of god he would not be turned uh, from his purpose but held fast the angel and urged his petition with earnest agonizing cries until he prevailed now again that's something very important that this is not this is not this is not really the cause it you know there's something else coming up too as satan influence Esau to march against Jacob so he will stir up the wicked to destroy what? Oh, God's speak in a time of trouble. See, so I said, if we could only see what's coming, the dangers that's coming upon us, we could only see. Okay? So we have Just to see God's our, our, our behavior. Right. Otherwise, we wouldn't get the best help we need. So we need to exactly, this is what he's doing, this is what right. he's supposed to do. Let's smash them. Let's go work. That's right. Very good point. And, and as he accused Jacob, he will urge his accusi uh, accusations against the people of God. He numbers the world as his subjects, but the little company who keep the commandments of God are resisting his supremacy. If he could blot them from the earth, from the earth. His, his triumph would be complete. He sees that what holy angels are guiding, guiding them, them, and his infers that their seals have been pardoned. 
because Christ is interceding for us, right? And that's what, you know, um, that's our defense right now. But he does not know. Yeah, but he does not know that very good. But he does not know that. The cases have been decided in the heavenly, in, in the century in above. I sit and accuses the people of God on account of their sins. The Lord permits him to try them to the uttermost. Okay. Their confidence in God, their faith and firmness will be severely tested. Yes. Mm. yes. This is what I'm saying, and that's what we have been to be prepared for. We need to be prepared for. Trouble is about to come upon us. There's no two about it. Okay? As they review the past, their hopes sink, and in their whole lives, they can see little mm. good. They afflict their souls before God, pointing to the, the past repented, repentance of their, of their many sins, and pleading the, the Savior's promise. Let him take hold of my strength, that he may make peace with me. And he shall make peace with make peace with, with, with me. Their faith the, the faith does not fail because their prayers are not immediately answered. Those suffering the, the, the keenest anxiety, terror, and distress, they do not cease their inter inter intercessions. They lay they, they lay hold of the of the of the strength of God as Jacob laid hold of the angel, and the language of their soul is I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Mm -hmm. Had not Jacob previously listen to this verse, this is a very important point. Had Jacob previously prepared had Jacob not previously repented of his sin in the, in obtaining the birthright by fraud, God would not have heard his prayer and mercifully preserved his life. So in the time of trouble, if the people of God had Unconfessed sins to appear before them while tortured with fear and anguish, they would be overwhelmed, despair, and would not and, 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 and would cut off their feet, and they could not have confidence to plead. Sorry, confidence to plead with God for for deliverance. But while they have a deep sense of their unwillingness. They have no con they have no concealed wrongs to reveal. Their sins have gone before beforehand to judgment and have been blotted out and they and they cannot bring them to repentance. Amen. Remember. I'm going to go fast because of time, Reverend. Satan leads many to believe that God will overlook their unfaithfulness in the minor affairs of life. But the Lord shows in his dealings with Jacob that he will in no wise sanction or tolerate evil. Okay? Mm -hmm. All who endeavor to excuse or conceal their sins and permit them to remain upon the books of heaven, unconfessed, unforgiven, will be overcome by Satan. Mm -hmm. Because because when when you don't when you when you cherish your sins it gives the devil um, control over you. And you, you don't want that, yes. Thank you, very good access. You're under his power. Right, right. And we don't want that, brethren. And brethren, it's, it's okay because um, all we, now we know, the more we know, you know, we need to ask God to help us. That's the key, you know, that, that's the thing, you know. Because um, I know, brethren, we know we have a lot of things going on. So, it's ask God to help us to overcome them. But you have to be genuine about it. You have to be willing to overcome them with the Lord. Amen. You will help you to overcome them gradually. Okay? Those who delay the pre listen to it, those who delay the preparation for the day of God cannot obtain the obtain the time of trouble. So we cannot delay the preparation. Now is the is the time to ask her to help us overcome. Okay? okay? It's a process. Or at any subsequent time. The case of all such is hopeless. The case of all such is hopeless. Uh, um, explain this a little. Which one? Uh, why you just read? Because that is what we was talking about. Yeah, I think one. we was mentioning yes, it yes, this morning. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I will overcome you know, but I'm waiting. Mm. Right. Or the the holy um, right. in the latter rain I'll get it. No. Right. What 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 if we don't yeah. overcome now? Right. Just like how just like how when you plant a country. Mm -hmm. And 
the rainy season come and water that plant mm -hmm. but at the end of it there is no there is no air of corn on it right. don't believe that when the time the last rain right. to ripen the fruit that tree is going to bear it wouldn't That's true. because the time of bearing has oh, passed right. it is the time of ripening now Mm -hmm. So if we don't overcome now, some people waiting on um, when the latter rain fall, right. but the latter rain would not fall upon sinful hearts. Right. That is true. But what I would say to us here is, and he's correct, and the statement here is, now is time for preparation. But what I'm saying is that even if we have, a, even overcoming is a process, but it's good to start now. If you have not started. Start now, okay? Because so I'm saying is like when it comes to victory, God gives the victory, not man. Yes. You see, mm -hmm. so the fact that we are trying, He knows we are willing. That's the key. We are willing. 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 Yes. yes. So that's what's important. Okay. So that's what I really want to draw across. Okay. Um. Now in the writing page, um page um, 47. God has shown me that he gave his people a, what, a bitter cup to drink to purify and cleanse them. He has given Adventists, his people, it's a bitter, it is, it is, it is what is called what? a bitter draft. And they can make it still more bitter by what? Murmuring and complaining and repining. See all those things again, that's not good. But those who receive it thus must have another draft. For the first does not have its design of effect upon the heart. And if the second does not affect the, the work, then they must have another and another until it does its design effect. Or they will be left filthy impure in heart. I saw that this bitter cup can be sweetened by what? Patience, endurance, yes. prayer. Yes. Okay? Those things are very, I like, see, yes. I have a presentation on patience, endurance, and prayer. Brethren, we, that's what we need to be teaching the brethren. This is the remedy. You see, the cup can be sweetened by patience. We start, we start teaching patience. We need to understand what, what that means. Okay, endurance. What does it mean to endure? Can the Bible say to us in Mark 24, verse 13, but he that endure unto the end shall be saved. Okay, so we need to, we need to understand that. Okay, so. As we move forward, you know, we can get into at a similar time. The season, I'm almost done, Reverend. The season of distress and anguish before us will require a faith that can endure what? Weariness, delay, and hunger. A, a faith that will not fade. Though severely tried, the period of probation is granted to all to prepare for that time. Jacob prevailed because what? He was preserving, persevering and determined. His victory is an evidence of the power of the importunate prayer. All who will, all will, all, all who will lay hold of God's promises, as He did, and be as earnest and persevering as He was, will succeed as He succeeded. Those who are unwilling to, to deny self, to organize before God, to pray long and earnestly for His blessing will not obtain it. Resting with God, how, what, how few know what it is. Those who exercise but little faith now are in, in greater danger of, fitting, of falling into the power of satanic delusions and the decree to compel the conscience. You see, those who have little faith will not make it. They will not make it. So brethren, that's something that, that's what the gold See, the goal, we've been talking about the goal, is very important. And even if they endure the test, they will be plunged into deeper distress and anguish in a time of, uh, in time of trouble because they have never made it a habit to trust in God. The lessons of faith which they have neglected, they will be forced to learn under a terrible pressure mm. of discouragement. Mm. Brethren, yep. that goal, Christ I counted by, by goal trying to fire. That gold is very important. Okay, I saw the four angels would hold would hold the four winds upon 
Until? Until just what just what was done in the sanctuary. And then will come the seven last plagues. These plagues and en en enraged the wicked against the, the righteous. They thought that we had brought the judgment upon God upon of God. God, of God upon them and that if they could read the earth the earth of us the plagues would then be stayed. A, de <laughs> <laughs> a decree went forth to slay who? The saints. The saints. A, a decree went forth to slay who? The saints. Us. <clears throat> Reverend us. It's coming. And the thing is that we don't know when it's gonna happen. That's the thing. Mm. You see? Now listen to this. This was the time of Jacob's trouble. Then all the saints cry out with anguish of, 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 of spirit and were delivered by the voice of God. That's the, that's, that's the hope we have. When Christ shall cease his work as mediator in months we have, then the time of trouble will begin. The time of trouble is before any of the sleeping saints are, are resurrected. Therefore the 4,000 are not resurrected, but are living saints who have never tasted death and are to be translated in, in, in the coming of the Christ. The second coming. The second coming of Christ. Now this 4,000 is the second itself, okay? So, um, the second that... Can I the slide before this one, please? Pardon? I like to capture the slide. Which one? Before. The one before oh. this one. Yes. I have... There it is. Great Controversy, page 88. Six... Uh, tw tw 21. You got it? Okay. Now, it's really serious to us here. Now, remember that the last closing slides are very important. We're coming to the end, but they are very crucial. Okay? Now, it's really says in volume 8, 315. She, 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 she wrote, she says, her, she says her that a storm is coming. Relentless in its fury. Are we prepared to meet it? Reverend. So she's preparing our minds. We need not say the prayers of the last days are upon so us to come. Soon to come upon us. Soon to come upon us, right. Daniel, so and then we have Daniel. So now I can see we're transitioning from Jacob's time of trouble to a time of trouble. So there are two things that are about to come that are probably about to go through. Jacob time of trouble because Jacob had issues with his who? His brother. And then we have issues with, you know, the world. The world. So let's just happen here. <laughs> Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which stand up before the people, for the people, for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. To so that time, to so that same time. And at that time, again, this is the, 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 the promise again. And at that time, thy people shall what be de delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book of life. Book of so the book here is, we have to know how our names are written in the book. And we have to make sure that our names, are, our name, our names remain in the book of life. Because, because our names can be blotted out, and we don't want that, okay? Um, therefore, it is important that we should be free from all wickedness and, and obedience to the divine requirements. The time of trouble such as never was, it was so it is soon upon us. And we and we shall we shall need an experience which we do not possess. And which many are too indolent. You, you know what's indolent? <laughs> yes. That's the thing, man. We, we don't want to spend an extra hour to, to pray or we spend an extra, extra hour to do certain things for God. Hmm. We don't spend an extra time to do this. It's, it's, it, like they find it's annoying, it's too much, you know. <laughs> it is often the case that trouble is greater in anticipation than in reality. But this is not true of the crisis before us. In that time of trial, every soul must stand for what? For himself before God. Every man, every female, and it's very, very, it's coming. It's going for an exam. Yes. Each person going for this. I'm telling you. <clears throat> and always remember, brethren, when we are going through this, you guys, I know you have this 
seminar happening with the pillar of faith, all remember the pillar is what keeps that keeps the, the pillars. Sorry, the foundation is what keeps the pillars firm. And that's Jesus. Amen. All remember that as we go along. Just remember that, brethren. That's very, very important. Okay? Though Noah, Daniel, and, and Job were in the land as as they said the Lord, they will deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but mm -hmm. deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Wow. Now, while our great high priest is making the atonement for us, we should seek to become perfect in Christ. Mm -hmm. you see, that's emphasis mm -hmm. to have a Christ like character. Hmm. So, so, you so, see? Sir, so, we should be individually yeah. by ourselves working this out. Yes, very good point. Okay. Yes, very good, very good point. <laughs> Very good point, Pastor. Very good point. Very good point. You see, the devil trouble is coming. And it's coming. It's coming because right now the world right now is unstable. Oh, yeah. It's happening in the world, Reverend. Nothing is the, after the pandemic, nothing is the same anymore. Of course. And since so I said the lack of movement will be what? Rapid. Rapid. Yeah, it's going to come. It's happening all over the place. Wars happen happening everywhere. It's coming, Reverend. It's coming. So that's my encouragement to, to us here, Reverend. Don't quit. Yes. I always give a word of encouragement, brethren. Don't, don't, don't let go. No matter how you think things may be, don't give up. The Apostle John is in vision and heard of the voice, the light voice of heaven exclaiming, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and to the sea, for the devil is come down upon you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. Fearful are the saints which call for this exclamation, from the heaven, heavenly voice, the wrath of Satan increases as his time grows short, and his work of deceit and, de and destruction will reach its culmination in a time of trouble. But the people of God will not be misled. The Lord will will be there for His people. The word culmination means that it will come to an end. Okay, so His destruction will come to an end. The Savior was one. The Savior was one. Has warned. Yeah, sorry. The Savior had warned his people. The Savior had warned his people against deception upon his this point and was clearly foretold the manner of his second coming. There shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible that they shall deceive very elect. And now, Reverend, this is something I want to 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 to, to bring up to mention here. There shall be false Christ and false prophets. Now, in the Bible, it says that, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that brought miracles before him. This guy must come on the scene pretty soon. Look out for him. <laughs> the false prophet. We don't know who he is. He's gonna come on the scene pretty soon. No, he's not. Mm. Okay. See and, and listen to this. Listen, for your respect, okay. I start. I start with, with, with respect. Mm -hmm. But but listen, listen to this, because the Bible speaks of the beast, the false prophet, and um, the devil. Yes. So there are two distinct people there, okay. Three. Yeah, three. Very good. Three. Very good. Yeah. Individuals. But but that get get that's a different thing right But listen to this. And the reason why I'm saying we need to know this. Listen to this. Only, only those who have been diligent students. students of the scriptures and have received the love wow. of, of truth will shield, be will be shielded from, will be shielded from the powerful delusion that takes the world captive. See, Reverend, this is why I said we have many lessons to learn, learn and many, many to unlearn. We have to be able to discern what's happening in the world. This this is this is the same thing that goes along with Revelation sixteen. Ah, it's three of them that yes, work three. in coordination. Right. Just as how the Father, right. the Son, and the Spirit works. Right. Is so this three dimension system uh -huh. work in unison. Right. Okay. Right. To destroy the world. Right. Very it's good. The beast. The dragon. Right, and the false prophet. Yeah, but Ella Victor, I just want you to understand the free, okay, it's very important, okay. By the Bible testament, 
these will detect see by the bible testimony this will detect who the, the deceiver in his disguise. disguise you see that's how we we'll know who he is when he comes mm -hmm. you see to all the testing time will come by the shift by the sifting and temptation temptation. Sorry, and temptation the genuine christian will be revealed see the genuine yeah. christians yeah. that's when you'll know who's who yeah. at some point it just comes yes see brethren all the people of god now so fully established upon his word that they would not yield to the evidence of their senses so it's not about feelings at some point it's about strict it's obedience to god yeah it's not even your senses right. even right. if you're seeing and you're feeling right. it it's gonna be right dupe. right dupe. it's what the word says yes Will the Lord forget His people in, in, in this trying hour? See, talking about an hour. See this, see this hour thing, brethren. It's a very important hour, you know. It's always been mentioned so often, and I will come on in a few minutes. Did He forget fearful, uh, sorry, faithful Noah when judgments were visited upon the anti Lutheran world? Did He forget Lot when, he, when, when the fire came down from heaven to consume the cities of the plain? Did he forget Joseph surrounded by the by idolaters in Egypt? Did he forget Elijah when the oath of Jezebel threatened him with the fate of the prophets of Baal? Did he forget Jeremiah in the dark and dumped dismal pit. Dismal pit of his prison house? Did he forget the three woodies, the three Hebrew boys in the fire furnace? Did he or Daniel in the land then? He did not forget those guys. They were faithful to him. So, can a woman forget his suckling child that she should, should not have compassion on the son of her wombs? Yea, they may, they may forget, yet will I not forget. Amen. God will forget us. And if the Bible says, and Lord says, He that toucheth you, toucheth what? The apple of his eye. God will protect us. Amen. But again, we have to overcome. We have to go through that, that trying time, brethren. We are going to be faithful. And we have to go back to the word of God. Okay? Though enemies may thrust them into prison, yet dungeon walls cannot cut off the communication between their souls and Christ. The prison will be the as what a palace hmm. for, the for, the, in for the rich <laughs> in faith. Dwell there. there. And the gloomy walls will be lighted, lighted up. Um, heavenly light, heavenly, heavenly light. light, as when Paul and Silas prayed and sung, and sung praises at midnight in the in the Philippian dungeon. The people of God would not be free from suffering, but while persecuted and distressed, while they endure privation and suffer and suffer for, for for want of food, they will not be left to perish. While the wicked are dying. From hunger and pestilence, angels will shield the righteous and supply their wants. When the poor and needy seek water, and there, and there is none, for the tongue filleth their face, the, the, the first, the Lord will hear them, and I, God of Israel, will not forsake them. So there are promises to us, brethren. God will protect us. Yeah, to to human sight, it will appear that. The you people know, of God. Their Very good. I did the martyrs before them. See what happened to the martyrs. Ha <laughs> See what happened to the martyrs before, brethren? We have to go through the time. We'll be going through something similar to that. It is a, a time of fearful agony. Day and night, they cry on to God for deliverance. Okay? Yes. And, and I want to read one thing, one, one last thing here in terms of what God is about to go through based on the agonizing. Uh, in Luke chapter 18, the Bible says to us, and he said a parable unto this, he said a parable unto them to this end. See, to this end, that men ought to always to pray and not to faint. Read for me somebody, please, if you don't mind. Saying, uh -huh. there was in a city a church which feared not God, neither regard, regarded man. Mm -hmm. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while 
but afterwards he said within herself. Afterwards, uh, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because the widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall, I, and shall not God avenge his soul, his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith in the earth? Shall he find that gold? The gold. And the gold turn the fire? Mm -hmm. Faith and love. Yes. Gold. Will he find that gold? That gold is looking for. Faith as well. Faith. The Savior, I'm, I'll come to the end, oh. brethren. This is the last, I think, last couple of slides. The precious Savior will send help just when we need it. The way to heaven is cons consecrated by his footsteps, footprints. Every thorn that wounds our, our feet has wounded his. Every cross uh, yeah. that we are called to bear, he has borne before us. The Lord permits conflicts to prepare the soul for yes. peace. The time of trouble is a fearful ordeal for God's people, but it is the time for every true believer to look up Hallelujah. by the faith and, and may see the bow of, of promise encircling him. The eye of the Lord looking down to the uh, down the ages when earthly powers shall be arrayed against him. Glorious will be the deliverance of those who have patiently waited for his for his Savior and whose names are written in the book of life. Amen. The time, the time of the day of the Lord is pointed by the increased wrath, trouble, distress, um, um, witness, desolation, darkness, and gloominess. So far as I know, there has been never been never been light. The world's condition uh, of today is the only condition. Hear that? The world's condition today is the only condition that meets the challenge of these prophecies. Since this is true, then this is the day in which the Lord is to what? Search so so Jerusalem with what? Candles. Candles. What does that mean? What does that mean? Now listen, now she, she wrote that based on Zephaniah 12, 1 verse 12. Listen to this. And it shall come to pass in that time that what? I will search Jerusalem with candles. He's sitting in the church with candles. He's sitting in the church. Yes. With what is he looking for? Yes. The gold. Ah, the gold. He's sitting in the church with candles. And Reverend God does not make mistakes. Oh, this candle does not make nice. Very good. Very God does not make mistakes. He's searching the church. He's examined. He's looking for character, the gold. And to be more precise, you're looking for something also. There's one thing we're looking for is people today. And I, let me show you what let me tell you what it is. And there was given No, let me let me I'll go back to the slide. This is what he's looking for. I can't tell you by me go trying to fire that I may be rich. The gold is faith and love. It is moral worth that God values. You know, brethren? Yes. So I say that's one thing we're looking for in his people today. Moral worth. Moral worth. He knows your heart. I don't care who you are. I don't care how you portray yourself to be. Brethren, that's the whole reason why, you know, when you look at the Avenue Church on a whole, from conference down to the regular people, you know, I look at God's people and I, I, I compare them, I compare what's happening to the Word of God. I'm saying, them. Say by I know them. exactly what we are. Why I you know said, what's going on. I said them. <laughs> Am I wrong? Yes, they do. No, you're wrong. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Okay. <laughs> so listen to this, brethren. Listen to it. It's more a word that God values a Christian character and blotted with. It, it, av um, avarice. Avarice, yeah. Very avarice, very good. This avarice, brethren. Barbarous is, is, it means that, that very good, very good. You heard that, brethren? People breathe. You always want something. 
That's all money. Okay. Crazy. Again, let me see yes. Yes. Avarice. Avarice. Yes. Yes. Possessing quite um quite um quickness, meekness, and humility, and more is more precious in the sight of God. You see, see what God is looking for. Um, so here we are told that Philippians four. Before I go to Ephesians four thirteen, so let's go back here. Listen to this, Reverend. In Revelation chapter um, eleven, the Bible says, "Was and there was given me a reed, like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple. That's the church, and the altar, and them that worship therein." Listen to this. I'm reading from um, Summers on, on, on. I don't know. I think that's um, Femma. What what's um, seven? Inspiration says. I, I don't remember that book, but it, it says it. Yeah. Summons on talks of a volume two. Now the Lord says, measure the temple, the worshippers thereof, thereof. Remember when you are walking in the streets about your business, God what is measuring you. When you are attending your household duties, when you engage in conversation, God is measuring you. Remember that your words and actions are being photographed in the, in the books of heaven. Everything we do or say, brethren, has been recorded. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay? These things are very important for us to analyze. So, brethren, I will leave you with this, with this inspiration here, Philippians 4.13. Word of, 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 of upliftment. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep, you, keep your hearts and minds through Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, yes. whatsoever yes. things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are, are good, uh, uh, our good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think of these things. So, Reverend, so here we see God looking for faith of gold, not just any faith. Faith that is strong as gold. That's what he's looking for. And guess what? And once we have passed the test, and we have that character that he's looking for in us. This is what we will hear from him. Matthew chapter 25 says what? Well done. Can you tell me read that read aloud for me, please? Well yes. done, our well good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter in in the joy of thy life. These are Reverend, these words we will hear from our Savior. We want to hear Matthew 25 verse 21. We don't hear anything else. We want to hear welcome. Well done. Okay, Reverend. So, Reverend, I trust and pray that um, I know we ex exceed our time, but I just want to encourage us that um, I would believe that when there's life, there's hope. Yes. When there's life, there is hope. And let us try our best, Reverend God's help, to um, do what He has called us to do individually and also collectively. And those that we have connections with, we still have to reach out to them and give them a word of encouragement. It's our duty to do, to do that. Okay, Reverend? And let's just, and we don't know what's really happening with people. I always say that it's not our, not our job to be judgmental. But let us try to, yes, we can correct. But let's try to reach out to, to the brethren. And I trust and pray that the Lord do his, do his part. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. And I trust that we'll um, move forward together. Thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.